Uh, we want to talk to you about a subject we talked a little bit about yesterday, but boy, it's getting serious. In case you haven't noticed, the U.S. newspapers, they are folding at an alarming rate, and uh, some people are switching to online only. No newspaper in your hand. Can you grab me a newspaper so I can, so I can have it? Um, others have pulled the plug completely. The Rocky Mountain News stopped its presses at the end of February. That's after 150 years. The Seattle Post Intelligentsia fell right behind it, and it was almost as old as that. Even some of the biggest newspapers, the most well-known papers in the country, are bleeding red ink and might not survive. So should newspapers get a financial bailout? There has been some talk in Washington about it. Um, and I think one lawmaker has introduced legislation to possibly uh, make, make them operate as nonprofits, tax-free. My guests here this evening have written extensively on the uncertain future of newspaper newspapers. Here again with us tonight is uh, Leonard Pitts, Jr. He is a Pulitzer Prize-winning columnist with the Miami Herald. Thank you, sir. Also with us. Another, I guess you can call him a regular, he's becoming author and political columnist, David Sirota. Both of them writing this week, as a matter of fact, about newspapers. Is it the end? Is it, you know, they're possibly going to be bailed out? I, for one, I have to say, I'm somewhere in the middle. I get my news, you know, on, on the Internet. And also, I like, especially the Sunday paper, Mr. Pitts, I like holding this in my hand right. and reading it. Right. Well, I think that a lot of us who grew up with newspapers have sort of a romantic attachment to, to newspapers, but I think that uh, the problem is that those of us who have that romantic attachment tend to be, uh, how shall I put this, of a certain age. <laughs> and those who are not, who have yet to attain that certain age, don't have any romance about it at all. And, and don't really even know about it, know about, uh, exactly. about what's going on. So uh, there are people who say, uh, David Sirota, that, you know what, uh, the newspapers are really just sort of relics of the past, Information can be gotten at your fingertip. Why do we need newspapers? Because newspapers are the, are the original journalists. They do a lot of the legwork and real reporting that the rest of the media uses. You know, if, if it's talk radio, if it's the internet, a lot of television stories come from the hard scrabble reporting of newspapers, of local newspapers, big metro dailies. They do, they've traditionally been the home of investigative journalism. If that goes away, then it hollows out the rest of journalism. What, what will talk radio have to talk about if there's no newspaper in a major city? What will, what will the internet, what will bloggers have to blog on if there's no original reporting at newspapers? That's the real foundational question here. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because if you look at blogs and all of these things, most of the stuff has gotten uh, from newspapers anyway. And then the other things that, usually the things that don't come from newspapers turn out not to be you know on the factual side once it's on the internet but let me say this you know I, as i was speaking to you yesterday um, mr pitts you were you were talking about if newspapers die then the crooks won't cry we may not have known about rod blagojevich or we may not have known about detroit and kwame kilpatrick and other stories right. if there were not for newspapers do you uh, you wrote about it do you really believe that's so though I believe that's definitely so. Uh, I think that people are under the misconception that any f platform that brings you news is interchangeable with any other platform, but that's not the case. Each has different strengths and weaknesses. This evening, for instance, CNN is covering, I believe, a, uh, a shooting in a, um, in a nursing home, as I recall. Mm -hmm. I didn't see much of it, but I, but I, but I happen to see that. Well, that's a story that, that is, that is uh, major, and it's breaking, and it's something that you guys are going to be all over. But if in that same town the, uh, the governor is steering contracts to a construction company that is controlled by his brother-in-law or his high school chum or something like that, CNN is not going to be the best position to bring that news. It's going to be a, a newspaper in that city, in that region, that has had a reporter parked on the governor's doorstep for, for days, turning into weeks, digging through the files and digging through the information that's going to find that well, story. The, and the way we do that, though, maybe that's, maybe that's part of the solution. The way we do um, make sure that we have uh, inroads or insight into communities, into local communities, is we have affiliates. Uh, and partners in those areas. So should the bloggers and the people who are putting your information out on the internet become partners? And should people who are receiving that information, should they be paying for it off of the internet? David? Well, I, I think there's going to be new partnerships, new collaborations. But can, the, the question is whether, whether citizen journalism, if you will, can replace newspaper journalism. And I don't, th I no, don't think it can. All. You know, it was, no. it, was, it, was, it was HBO's David Simon, who did the, the director of the show, The Wire, who was a former Baltimore uh, Sun reporter, 
who, who recounted the story about how he had looked into uh, a major police uh, uh, shooting there uh, and that he, he said, you know, I, I, when I looked into it, I wasn't stumbling over bloggers or citizen journalists uh, banging down the doors uh, of the police department. In other words, citizen journalism is not going to replace newspaper journalism, so newspapers are going to have to innovate their way out of it. And I, and I think the way they're going to have to do that is focus really in a hyper kind of way on local, local news. Local yeah, news. And also, Pink, go ahead. Go ahead, Lenny. I was going to say, I, I think the, the misconception that, that, that we have sometimes that nobody's reading the stuff that we do in newspapers, and it's exactly the opposite. Uh, we are being read more than we've ever been read before. The problem is we are being read in a new medium. We are being read online on the Internet, and we have not yet figured out a way to turn enough of a profit from the Internet to support the, to support the, the huge news-gathering operations that, that we have. That's the problem. I really think that the answer is somewhere in there, and it becomes a rights issue if you're, you know, if you, you're product of what you produce shows up somewhere, you should be able to be paid for it, and newspapers should be able to be paid for it as well. And I think that, you know, last night Saturday Night Live summed it up when they had a blogger on uh, and in, being interviewed on the news, and they said, what do you do? And I said, are you a full-time blogger? She says, no, I work for an insurance company, and I just sort of blog on the side. So it kind of makes the point that you guys are making here today. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. You're quite welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you.